Now, the Highlanders, they are embarking on a massive season this year. And leading the way is multi-talented midfielder Kenny Lynn. He's joining us on the couch. The man who loves Black Forest chocolate and ear drumming to warm up before a game is here right now. Welcome. Yeah, thanks for having me. Oh, no worries. Now, this ear drumming that you do before each game, what, what song do you like to do it to in particular? Yeah, well, I've got a kind of set playlist that I listen to before my game. Uh -huh. So you often see the rugby players kind of zoning out with the big headphones on. Um, I listen to a little bit of Credence Clearwater and then I kind of ramp up a bit as I get closer to game time with a bit of Metallica or something like that. So um, I'm happy to do a bit of anything. But yeah, I'm usually in the corner kind of just to myself and just having a bit of a beat. And usually <laughs> the boys looking at me sideways, but yeah, it's good to relax too. What if we were to play down a song? Because we've got a DJ on hand. Um, CXL, got any, got any tunes? Oh. oh, here we go, and I can flick it up. Oh, you can too! So clever. <laughs> okay, okay, we'll have to interrupt you. Let's talk about, Sorry, about rugby. It <laughs> You're like, knock, knock, we're here. Um, now, you had a great season last year. What was one of the highlights playing for the Highlanders? Yeah, well, we had, a, we had a good season last year. We kind of slipped under the radar and surprised a few teams. Um, one of the you know, big, big highlights for me was when we beat the Bulls in Pretoria. That's a really intimidating environment over there. Their fans are yelling and screaming, and um, there's a really passionate kind of hatred for you if you're a, a visiting team, and we beat them over there. It was the first time they lost a home game for two years. That was awesome, and uh, I was also lucky enough to play in every minute of every game um, for the team, so the body was pretty had it by the end of the season, but it was pretty cool to be able to do that. Wow. And so how are you going to top that? What are you looking forward to this season? Well, this season, obviously the team's got off to a fantastic start. Um, so far, I haven't been able to be involved, unfortunately, with injury. So I'm just really looking forward to getting back on the field about halfway through the season and then um, hopefully making a difference and helping us make the playoffs. Wow. So, yeah, talking injury, you're out at the moment because you fractured your neck. Yeah, I did. I was playing in a pre-season game against the Crusaders in Greymouth and um, I was in a ruck and I um, had my head down looking at the ball and I got cleaned out by one of the big boys in the front row, they saw a, a wee back in there and they thought, well, we'll get rid of him. And yeah, I kind of, uh, my neck got caught in an awkward position and it fractured it. Um, but as far as neck fractures go, it's, it's you know, it's, it's not good, but it's the best kind I could hope for. So it um, hasn't affected the structure or the kind of the function of my neck, it's just out the back. And so I've got another about five or six weeks before I can get back playing. And during that time, you're still heavily involved in the team and you're producing the team newsletter. Yeah, well, I guess, you know, we've got a long season and we spend plenty of time for each other, so you get to find out a lot about each player in the team. And uh, just behind the scenes, I put together a few pages uh, that the guys can read, often on away trips. So I give it to them and then they get on the bus and can have a bit of a giggle. And, uh, yeah, I have a few segments like what's hot and what's not and a, a oh, bit yeah? of goss. And there's also a um, lookalikes page. So I'm sure everyone out there will know Jamie McIntosh, our captain. So he was one of the first big lookalikes because so, he's, he's got a really good resemblance to Hagrid of Harry Potter. <laughs> so that kind of kicked it off and it's just grown from there. Wow. So you're the guy who does all that? Yeah, so I've got to be careful, obviously, because I'm putting mm. that all that together. So all the guys have, have got a, you know, a bit of beef with me. So I've got to make sure I just kind of keep under the radar and don't yeah, do yeah. anything. Nice. Now, um, what about, I've heard you've got a bit of an embarrassing story. And in fact, what I can see right now, you might have repeated it. Oh. Um, I'm just going to remove this for you, Kenny. Oh, no, I have. Can, can you explain what's with the undies? <laughs> yeah, well... Well, pink's my favourite colour for a start. <laughs> it's, um, but I was, I went to the supermarket last week for our, you know, our, our shop for the house, and I, I was wearing um, quite baggy pants, and I kind of felt like they were a bit loose under my foot, and I felt like I was walking on them. But I just, oh, okay, you know, they're just a bit, they're a bit low. Uh, and then I got to the deli, and I was like checking out some of the meats, and then uh, my, my housemate just started cracking up behind me. He was actually losing it, like tears were coming out of his eyes, and I just looked around, I don't know what was happening, I was getting a few weird looks, and I saw that I had a pair of mould used undies stuck to the bottom of my foot, so I'd walked right through the supermarket with that, and uh, they were pretty bright as well, so I'm sure everyone would have noticed. I bet they did. <laughs> that's, that's the ultimate when you hear of embarrassing stories, it's classic. Yeah. Kenny, it's so great to have you here.